Well, I have a Sony compact disc player, CDP CE335, and I think we might be suffering from a mode select switch issue. So let's turn this thing on, see what it does. And it, it tries to load in random places. You can't load there, silly CD player. Okay, the disc opened, it is lined up correctly. It, I didn't touch it, it just closed. It reopened again. I hear a motor running. Now this is all on its own. I'm not touching a thing. Are, are you done? Nope, obviously not. <laughs> I don't even think you're close on this try. Oh, look at that. It actually found the turntable that time. So yeah, I'm thinking we're suffering from some contact switches that tells the microprocessor where the drawer status is, whether it's in or out. You know, the turntable status is normally read with an optical encoder. On the bottom of the turntable right here, they actually have little slits cut in it. So I'm thinking we need to try to find these in and out switches and clean those because once it opened and closed several times, it kind of found itself. Now, keep in mind that if you exercise these switches normally on a regular basis, they'll never need service. But when they sit and they oxidize over a long period of time, that is when you have problems. So I'm gonna to try to open it right now and see what it does. And once again, it's all over the place. And I'm not touching a thing. It's doing this all by itself. So next time it opens, I'm gonna go ahead and put a disc in it and just see if it wants to try to read the disc. Okay, so I have a disc in disc number one. So I'm gonna ask it to play disc number one if I can. And it, it doesn't wanna try, it's just, doesn't know where it is. All right, there we go. There it found it. And so, yes, it did read the table of contents. So I'm thinking definitely we have a select switch issue. Not necessarily a mode select switch like at a VCR, but definitely a select switch that tells it whether the drawer is in or out and whether the mechanism is up or down. All right, so I'm gonna pull the bottom off this unit as well as the front panel so that I can pull the drawer completely out of the unit and get to the switch that detects whether the drawer is open or closed. So now that I've got the bottom off, I can go ahead and unplug this big ribbon cable right here. That connects the front panel to the main board and I'll flip it over and get the rest of the front panel off. And there's still one ribbon cable I have to disconnect. This goes to the front panel fluorescent display, I do believe, or some of the buttons possibly. It just pulls out and unplugs. All right, so now that the front panel is completely off, I can just go ahead and rotate this gear until it starts coming out. Then I can actually just pull it out and push it back as necessary. So let's flip the unit back over. And so now to completely remove the tray, I have to take out these two brackets on this side and the two brackets on that side. Now I can pull the tray out and we can go ahead and disconnect this one ribbon cable right there. And at that point, I can just finagle the tray up and get it completely out of the way. Okay, now we need to go ahead and pop off these retainers off of these gears. Just lift it up and they'll kind of pop right out of there. Got the second one out. Now these two gears are gonna come out in unison. And these things are gonna snap in. They're spring-loaded, so don't worry about that. 
but the gears can be totally removed just like that. Doesn't that look familiar? It looks like a regular mode select switch. So let's go ahead and pop out the one screw. We'll disconnect the terminals from the bottom of it and get it completely out because I don't think that I can get it open any other way. Okay, so we'll go ahead and untuck this cable from the little hold downs it has. Unplug it. Unplug this one as well. Then while we're down here, we can go ahead and push these tabs in. And that will begin to release the mode select switch. Then I can push this one tab up and out of the way. And the mode select switch is completely out at this point. So this is just a classic mode select switch like you would find in a VCR. It's just a rotary encoder, basically. I'm just going to go ahead and pop my thumbnail under it here somewhere. Or my fingernail. Pop it open, and then we can see the carnage inside. Look at that. Definitely oxidized. They use a very, very minimal amount of dielectric grease in here. So I'm going to get my stainless toothbrush, and we'll wipe this thing out, and hopefully that restores operation to the unit. Well, that certainly does look much better. I think I still want to try to get back in here. Okay, so I'm happy with that. It looks very good. All cleaned up, bright, shiny contacts. With some scuff marks, I don't mind the scuff marks. They're going to actually help keep it clean as there's a little bit of resistance now between the contacts as it slides. Then the same thing over here. I want to go ahead and clean up these contacts. Same with the VCRs, one direction only. Just want to make sure the tips of them are very bright and very shiny. Alright, looks much better. All the oxidation is gone. So let's go ahead and do an acetone test first to see if, because this is a Sony, and on the Sony VCRs made by Samsung, you cannot use acetone on them, but because this is an actual Sony-made machine, the acetone may not eat the plastic. I'll show you how to test for that. Okay, so first I'm just going to go ahead and get my moistened end of the cotton swab. Just rub it against the switch. Then when I turn the cotton swab over, if it turns black, then I cannot use it and it did not turn black and I'm just going to verify that it does not eat this plastic as well. So it should turn gray and everything is perfect. So I'm just going to wipe out the internal portion of the mode select switch. And then dry it off. Same thing over here with the contacts. There we go. Good or better than new. So I have a generous portion of silicon dielectric grease. People have asked me, where do you get this? Well, you can pick it up at most auto parts store. It's called silicon tune-up grease. And so I just want to go ahead and make sure I have a liberal portion of this grease and spread it across all of the contacts so that air cannot get to them. And then the same thing here, just going to put a nice big blob on the contacts. Once I put the two halves together, it's going to disperse the grease as I roll it around a few times. So assemble the two halves, just snap it back together, and then we'll just work it around a few times. Pop it back open, take a look at the tracks. Everything looks great. And so I think it's time to go ahead and reassemble the unit at this point. Make sure that you line up these marks right there. This black one might be kind of hard to see because of the reflections. but I can assure you there are two arrows and make sure they're pointed together. This slot should be pointed perfectly straight up right now. And so because this gear fell off when I was disassembling the unit, we wanna go ahead and make sure that that gear gets back into place. 
So now when you're putting this together, this pin right here has to go into that slot right there. And so if you look at this pin, it's lined up with that hole. So as long as you keep that hole straight up like that, it should go together no problem. But remember, these two gears have to go in together because this one has a second gear that's kind of cut at a different angle. When you go ahead and reassemble it, they have to go together in this orientation. You can actually look down through this hole right there and make sure that your pin is lined up with the mode select switch slot. So I'll go ahead and snap my clips back on. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and rotate my gear in both directions. Right here, these teeth would engage with the drawer and the drawer would be opening at this point all the way to that point. And then this is the neutral play position right there. And then if I rotate it farther, this should start to rotate and bring the mechanism up to clamp the disc. And then once the disc is clamped, this gear should begin to rotate and open the drawer in this direction for the disc exchange function. And everything looks absolutely perfect. All right, so next let's go ahead and put the drawer back in it and we'll do an optical cleaning, which I really can't show you because it lives underneath here. So I've just got to kind of gain access to it right there. There's the optical pickup right there. So I'll go ahead and do an optical cleaning and we'll put this thing back together and hopefully everything is good at that point. Okay, so the turntable on this unit does not use a mode select switch to determine where it is. It uses an infrared emitter and an infrared detector that looks through here. And the turntable actually has slots in it that makes and breaks the beam. Now this emitter and this detector is actually only used to determine if there's actually a disc in the position to play before it actually tries to focus. So this is the turntable itself. And if you look, you'll see like in this position there's there's one two three four solids and one two three broken slots then as i rotate this around you'll see there's three evenly spaced with open windows for the detector to see and then once again one two three four with three evenly broken spots and now there's four prongs. Keep going, one, two, three, four. And now we got one, two, three, four, five evenly broken spots. One, two, three, four. So this, much, this must be the index that tells it where it is right here. So we've got two with one center, so that's disc number one. We've got three, so it's got two open spaces, that's disc number two. So one, two, three, four, I've got three open spots, that's disc number three. And then one, two, three, four, that's disc number four. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, that's disc number five. So that's how it knows where the actual turntable rotation is. It does not use a rotary encoder or a mode select switch for this portion of the unit. Okay, here we go. Power on. Let's see what it does. It's going to go ahead and check the drawers and see if there's any discs in it. If you notice it slows down, for the optical emitter and detector to see if there's actually a disc in place or not. Let's go ahead and open the drawer. And I'll pop a disc in to disc number one and I'll hit play. It immediately clamps it and begins to play it. And it's playing perfectly. Let's skip ahead. Let's go all the way to the end. Track number 18. It's playing perfect. Let's go back to track number one.
There it is, it's working absolutely perfectly. Playing back the disc, it knows where it is. The tray actually opens and closes. Let's see if we can do a disc exchange while it continues to play. So this allows the drawer to open. You can actually change a disc now while the one continues to play. And it does not interrupt the plane of the disc that you have clamped. Well, that's it. The end of the video, the Sony CDP CE335 has a rotary encoder just like one of the Magnavox VCRs I've done so many videos on. I certainly hope you enjoyed the video on the Sony CD player, CDP CE335. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below, good or bad. I try to respond to the comments when I have time. While you're down there, hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really does help my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me NorCal715videos at gmail.com. That is the best way to contact me. Please be patient. I do have a full-time job and I do this in my spare time. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everybody, thank you for making it to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. Everyone have a great day. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.